lift up your hands to Jesus. Let's give him praise and give him all the glory and worship him, celebrate him.
empty handedness in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I reject poverty, poverty. blindness, wretchedness, empty handedness in the name of Jesus. I reject you. Oh, we are not reject you. Reject you to your mouth. Reject you to your destiny. Reject you to your life. I reject you. I reject you. a woman dried that oil. Any man here that was born to be wealthy, a wrong woman you had an encounter with, dried up that oil. That sexual intercourse dried up that oil. As you scream the loudest, amen, your oil of wealth is respond. <laughs> Don't 
make you rich. Your labor don't make you rich. But God makes rich. That's why when God makes you rich, nobody cannot make you. God makes rich. And I want to say some brief things and I want to take note of them. That the God we serve is in the business of making people rich and richer. He does not just make you rich, he makes you richer. He's in the business of making people rich and richer. Why? Because wealth brings glory to him. Why? Poverty brings disgrace to his name. God makes people rich not only because he wants to make them rich or they want to reach. He's making them rich because the riches brings wealth to him, bring glory to him. In Joel chapter 2 verse 26, Joel chapter 2 verse number 26, the scripture said that you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord. That means a person who can't eat well can praise God. A person who can eat well can praise God. In other words, that when you when you eat well and you are satisfied, it gives you a platform to praise God well. It does not matter how spiritual you are. If you are hungry, there is a limitation to your presence. It does not matter how you know God. If there is no money in your account and you are struggling, there is a limit to how, how far you can praise God. So God makes sure it gives you what to eat. It gives you not just what to eat. He makes you satisfied so you can praise his name. So he takes pleasure in you praising his name by giving you wealth. That is one of the reasons why God wants to make you rich. So even though you don't want to be rich, God wants to make you rich because your riches is a glory to his name. Anytime you praise him when you are well, it's a glory to him. So he's not making you rich because of you. He's making you rich because of his name. Because when you are wealthy, men will know that he's God. When you are in a good shape, people don't abuse your Christianity. Instead, they praise your Christianity. When you have something to eat, people don't mock you. That's why God wants to make you rich. And he sent me to tell you today that you have entered into a channel of wealth. Stand up everyone you are. I prophesy to you. My God will make you rich. My God will make you rich. Every poverty dies in your life. Poverty dies in your destiny. In the name of Jesus. Take your seat. If you take another Psalm 22 verse 26 He also said that the meek shall eat and be satisfied And they shall praise the name of the Lord The meek shall eat and be satisfied And praise the name of the Lord So hunger in praises is anger <laughs> Hunger in praises is anger is anger. Can, can I say it again? Whatever praises you are giving to God in hunger. You don't have money to it, even though God said in all this you should give God praise, but you are just praising him. Father, whatever you want to do, just do it. I just give it. Pastor said, lift up your hands and praise God. This man don't even have no eating. Say, you shout. Shout, Jesus is Lord. Jesus, you are Lord. Only you know that I've not eaten since two years. I break the yoke of poverty. I break the yoke of dryness. I call my wretchedness for God. I call my uselessness for God. I prophesy to you that the hand of God is coming on your life. You will make money. God will make you rich. God will make you rich. Shout yes. Take your seat. The second thing I want you to take note of. The second thing I want to take note of 
is God is not against you being rich, but God is against riches having dominion over you. God is not against you being rich, but God is against riches, money having dominion over you. First Timothy chapter 6, verse number 17. First Timothy chapter 6, verse number 17. God is not. He said, chant them that are rich in this world, that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God, who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. So, even though God is giving you wealth, God does not want the wealth to control you. I know we have too many over-righteous Christians. Anytime a pastor talks about money in church, they may be angry and say, why did he talk about soul winning? We all know that Jesus is coming soon. We all know that Jesus, even Jesus himself, that's the second service message. Even Jesus himself, the other time, when the when the, 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 the Pharisees and Sadducees people came to Peter and said to Peter, does your master pay tax? He said, no, how can he pay tax? Jesus said to Peter, least we offend them. Go to the sea, put a hook, and catch the first fish. There is money there. Pay for me. So even Jesus was paying tax. Pay for me and pay for yourself. Least we offend them. So if you are broke, somebody is offended. God is not against you. Be rich. God is not against you. Be wealthy. But God does not want your riches to stop the service. Don't be too rich that you can't come to church. It is heart that determines height. God is checking your height before he gives you a height. Many of us have not gone high because God knew if he give you money, you go spoil. If he give you because even the little one he has given you, you are even giving an excuse, you are telling him when he will come to church. There are people who don't there are people who don't complete four Sundays in their life. They don't complete it. They go to church first Sunday, they go to church last Sunday, they don't complete it. So God is saying, if you cannot complete church for Sunday, how can you complete church one year? So why am I giving you money? So the essence why he's giving you is so that it does not control you, but you control it. The third thing I want to take note of is that God has a purpose why he gives riches. God has a purpose why he gives riches. And there are five or six things and six purpose why God gives riches. Number one, God gives riches so that you live well. So that you live well. He gives you money so that you live well. So that you are not in the life of complaining. So that you live well. So that you have things to buy on your own. Excuse me, sir. No matter how spiritual you are, you cannot use speaking in tongues and buy food. No matter how dedicated you are, if you tell somebody that you want to buy, you will tell you, for example, your landlord, you tell your landlord, don't you know me born again, child of God? Don't you know that the Bible says, I sent you with that post and script, like he anything? Don't you know who I am? Don't you know that Jesus is my master? Landlord, if you don't leave my road, I will kill you, you will die. I know the God I serve. Landlord, landlord, and the landlord dear you that you will turn your teeth. Say, landlord, if you die and send my things away, you will know that God will appear to you. My brother, God won't appear. He won't. God does not appear in what money can answer. It's an insult. Instead, he gives you the money to answer for him. When God starts answering your landlord, he's the one that gave your landlord the money to build the house. So he too will be making money. So you ask him to give you money so that you can pay the man. He's an innocent man. He's looking for his money. So he, God would appear. That's why the landlord has not died. God can only appear to the landlord who is using people's destiny in the company. But as far as you are owing him, and you don't want to pay him, and you are speaking in tongue, God won't appear. Only tell God to appear for you. So he gives you money to pay the man. You understand what I'm saying? That's why even though you are a preacher, and you are preaching inside the bus, I remember those days when we used to preach in Moodway. Hold your transport. There are... The conductors now, the conductors now are very innocent. They are very born again. They are educated. In those times, 
those many years ago when when money when many of you more, no money were boss when there was money were boss in lagos when we climbed to preach you better no matter your preaching you better have your transport if you don't have your transport you will be preaching and conductor will be asking you for money and you say you don't have money they will pull your shoe as a preacher some Christians are so insulting that even when you don't have money as a preacher, I, you just finish preaching telling them that Jesus is coming soon, very soon that Jesus is coming soon, they don't repent you don't feel, all of them will just go so I knew that time I used to have my transport before you enter there are ones I saw, they seized this Bible and say pay me my money, let me send you work the question you ask yourself, oh father, see how this boy is being disgraced. No. Money answers some things. If you no get money, you go not say get waiting by you, no free answer you. Stretch your hand towards this altar. The anointing to gather money is release of money. I declare you will live well. You are your family will live well. Send the Lord has been what is the purpose why God is giving you wealth? Number two, God is giving you wealth so that you become responsible and meet responsibility. So that you become responsible and meet responsibility. I knew many years ago by my pastor who, who I was working under, he preached a message that I cannot forget. He said what makes a man irresponsible is when he cannot meet responsibility. You are an irresponsible person, not an abuse when you can meet responsibility. So God wants to give you money so you can meet responsibility. When it's time to pay rent, pay school fees, do things, you can meet it. It makes you have honor. When your family members call you that, ah, your mother calls you that you need money, you said it. it makes you have honor. When you see parents blessing the one that have honors, they are not playing game. They are not that they don't like other children. Money has a way of commanding honor. Age doesn't matter. If you have money, they can dethrone your age. When the first become the last, the last become the first. Money, money is strong. Though. Money is the only thing competing with God. He said, thou shalt not serve God and mammon. He didn't say devil. God is, that money is so strong though, that even God knew that money can take his place. Talk less of me if you don't have it in your family. I say, you I'm, I'm the senior, I'm the senior. Forget that thing. That's why as I'm praying this prayer, the same name and well. Don't come to church and pretend that see all is well. Let's not be pretending. We have, we have too many pretending Christians. We'll do as if we don't need money. And some of us now, we don't have anything in our account. As we are saying, pray, as we are saying receive money, now some of us are already, amen, 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 amen. And you don't have something to say, amen. Who knows whether God will just bless you? You don't know the amen that can change things. Somebody here because some of us come, some of us come to church and we pretend to be very born again, very righteous. As if, as if the toilet in your house you don't used to, you don't used to go to it. Because when people come to church and carry by, it looks as if they don't go to toilets, and you don't know their own, their own polluting is very hard. Because when we come now, we act as if we don't know. Somebody say, I need money. So Jesus give me money. your age yes, yes. that pass your labor that's the kind they suspect you yes. can I go on yes. so God gives you to take responsibility another reason why God gives you the money God gives you so that you become a voice you become a voice oh, well, now who get money now get a voice this 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 an international standard people are watching from abroad so. <laughs> 
<laughs> Let's make them money, man. Get voice. My spiritual father said, He who has the gold makes the room. You have the gold, you make the room. Please, let's not pretend. Let's be real. Let's leave all this thing. Some of us are just acting as if, as if, well, if, if anybody will preach about saying this man of God is not a true man of God. He likes money. Ah! Who told you? Everything on earth is money. Yes. How we pretend? If you say man of God drive church, we're angry. Can you try it? The man of God has almost 50 branches and he has to go all over the world. But until God make you global, you will know church is important. Yes. See, airport flights have not disappointed you. When your poster is in America and you are coming for a program and they told you a week ago that they've changed it, they've changed the date, and yet you have already fixed the date of your crusade in abroad, you will understand. When they have to tell you that the flight has to pick you, a flight will come from Ghana and pick you and drop at Dubai, and from Dubai will pick you to this place. But imagine. A, a journey of 12 hours with your flight, it is four hours. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Some of us just, we just, some of us, we Christian, we are too pretending, we just act as if we, we don't need money. And we are owing our landlord. We don't have house in our village. And we are broke. And we are, we are, we are, we are if you stand up to say, I receive it. I prophesy money is coming for you. of his kingdom. The church needs money, sir. The church needs money. The, the other, other religion are taking over the city. They are taking over the world. All of us are just pretending. Hey, yes men, yes men, money is going around. All this, all this bomb they are doing, somebody is sponsoring them. Christians, how many are sponsoring? It's only to put on Facebook and, and, and insult different pastors. God is giving us money so that his kingdom can move. So that, so that preaching can go. Do you know how many people that were sponsoring this? Was this people that just finished this program they did on TV? Big brother. There are, there are how many hours on TV? Is it not people that sponsor it? The kingdom of hell is taking over. Satan is giving his agents money to take over. People are busy watching that. But then they, let God bless a Christian and tell him open a channel for a church. You'll be angry. But you don't know that there's a naked channel now. There's a channel of cinema. There's a channel where they show dirty, dirty, useless things. But when that's why, if you go to local channel that you want to preach, the money is so high. They will tell you to preach for 30 minutes on local channel. Channels TV is five million for 30 minutes. But let it be online entertainment is cheap. But let it be gospel is high because they know they don't want gospel to enter. Some of us don't know what is happening in this world. They don't want gospel. They want because Satan is busy feeding his angel so that people will not hear gospel. If you turn to this channel, it is one music, one music. You turn here, one naked person. No channel, no local no channel is carrying gospel. There's a particular channel that a particular uh, Christian channel was on TV that had their TVC. They had in TVC. They had in Chinese TV. All of a sudden, they increase the money, increase the money, increase the money, increase the money. Till that that particular platform didn't have money again to pay for local channel again. I was preaching in that local channel. Yes, on TVC. I was preaching in that local channel. It was easier. People were paying three fifty thousand naira for three months. They increase it to a level that those people say they cannot pay. That the money is too much. But other people, other ungodly things are still existing. Check this place. See how club. Hotels are buying cities, and all of us are praising. Oh, this man will get this hotel, get money. Shame should catch you. When will you say, God, give me money? When will there be a mega church in this area? Which church is hey. see hold on? Hey. Where is a mega building that people pass the stand still? But yet, hotels are everywhere, and some of you say you don't need money. Stand on your feet and receive money. Today, I profess the money to pay for God is coming on your hand. Take your seat. First Chronicle chapter 22, verse 11. You will see where David, David, and Solomon combined together for 
the house of God to be built. In this city, I don't know how many of you God will give money. In this city, see between this session and the people that are properties worth millions, God is only keep looking for who He will put the money. We are a ten thousand sitter. A ten thousand. He might know. Imagine between the beginning of this place to the end, this church got a land. And a 10,000, a 7,000 seater Amen. car park, things are there. Imagine where people pass, how would they say, oh, Father, thank you. At last, church don't take over. Amen. Imagine that. I'm not against anybody doing business, but I'm saying that they should not be ahead of God. They shouldn't be ahead of God now. What are you people doing? Why are you doing as if you don't need this money? Where, where Satan is taking over? Why are you doing as if you don't need this money? When, when the whole place is being taken, look at hotels everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. Jam cars are packed. That's why when I'm prophesying about you having car, you don't understand. Imagine all of you now, all of you came here with car. Know how hold up you go here. As, do you know that people see that car around? Nah, they will be saying, ah, I go come church, I go come church. Something will happen here. But hey, if you don't need it, I prophesy. Even though you don't need it, you need it. I think you enter world. Is that what you use? 
So this guy is blessed. That word blessed is an invisible force that commands wealth. God puts it on a person's life and he commands wealth. The blessing. For example, if you read the book of Proverbs chapter 10 verse 22. For example, the book of Proverbs chapter 10 verse 22. You see, the blessing of the Lord make it rich and added no soul. So when that unction is called an unction, when the unction comes on you, God also did it for Abraham. If you read Genesis chapter 12 from verse 1 and 2 and 3, God said to Abraham, I will bless you and you will be a blessing. So he's talking about the blessing. The blessing is that unction that pulls money. When that thing is on you, Anywhere you go, opportunities comes for you. It's that unction that pulls money. That unction, Genesis 24, verse number 27. Genesis 24, you see where Abraham sat and said to, Abraham, said to, to his people, he said, he said, blessed be the God of my master, Abraham. Blessed be the God of my master, the God who blessed Abraham. He blessed Abraham. So when the blessing is on you, hands cannot be dry. Many of us, what is on our head is cause. What is on our head? There is no blessing on all. That's why anything you put on your hands, it dies. Somebody else is selling it, he makes it. But when you start selling it, it dies. What somebody else, look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me, talk to me, look at me. The difference between when you see somebody do something and you succeed, and you do it and you fail, it's not that the person is more wiser, it's not that the person carries something you don't carry. You can carry a, a goose and go to your neighbor's shop, it will sell. But when it's in your shop, it won't sell. Have you not seen people like that? There is a cause. The blessing of the Lord is what attracts things. What attracts opportunity, attracts money, attracts things that brings money to you. But when you don't have it, you are dry. Today is coming on your head. Take your seat. What are the now? What do you do for the blessing to rest upon your head? What do you do for the blessing to rest upon your head? What do you do under that number? You give for the blessing to rest upon your head. You give. It is giving that provokes the blessing. We saw how Abraham decided to give his only son and God blessed Abraham. God made Abraham succeed. God made Abraham, Abraham prosper because he decided to give his only son. Genesis 22 verse 12 to 16. So, if you know how to give, the blessing naturally comes on you. I have listened to many secrets of many richest people on the earth. No one is a trinity person. Many of them are philosophy. All of them. You see, the richest people sending money to Africa for them to claim malaria. You think they are fool? You see, Brigade send money and say this is this, his foundation that they are taking care of. Uh, what's this? Uh, this kind of sickness that used to be on children to take care of the poor, 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 to take care of them. Those are one person sponsoring it. To them, you say, now wow, you don't know that they are giving their way, but many Christians don't know that outsiders are practicing what you should practice. Even common offering, we don't give God. If we give God, we give Him what? We can't even give a conductor. And God said, I can't bless you. So it is giving. And what kind of giving is the giving that helps you? The giving of tithe. The giving of your tithe. Malachi chapter 3 verse 10. The giving of your tithe. If you give God, the thing, so some of us don't pay that. We don't even know what is that. What is that we are talking tithe? You don't know. You don't know. And that's why you are not, co you are not connected to the everlasting covenant of wealth. There's what we call everlasting covenant. Abraham covenant of wealth. Where money doesn't finish to generation. You say, Abiola is rich. Where is his wealth? Check all those people that were rich with that, being rich by the covenant of giving. They are broke today. Their children are suffering it. If you don't know how to give, you can't maintain wealth and get wealth. That is one of the Balaka chapter 3 verse 10. We saw that the next kind of giving we give is the giving of first fruit. You give first fruit. That is the first income that comes to your hand in a year. 
The first income that comes to your hand in a season when you start up a business. The first income. Many of us don't know what is first fruit. Many of us, there are some of us who people dash us money, but we don't know how to remove kites. And let me tell you, if people are always giving you money and you don't pay tithes, a time will come. Those people won't give you, not because they are wicked. You are not grateful to the God who is touching the heart of that person to give you. Say now that amen. amen. Why are you quiet? Are you ready to be rich? Yes. I have to give you the principle before I give you the impartation. You need to know it. So it is, it is, it is, that, it, it is first, first fruit. The next we have is sacrifice. That is the kind of things you give that is painful. That is the kind of thing you pull out that is heavy to you. The next kind of giving is the giving of seed and offerings. First Chronicles 16 29, seed and offering. We have what you call kingdom advancement project. Keep on advancement giving. That is the kind of giving you give to sponsor the gospel. There are many of us who only want money for ourselves. We don't want money for the kingdom. Can I tell you the secret? If you know how to tell God that your kingdom is number one, you will know how to put you number two. I'm telling you. The, the less privilege. The less privilege. Your families. Your families. The less privilege. People who don't have. You give to them. It attracts money. A widow tells you God bless you. That God bless you can take you generation. I remember one time I just got married. Remember one time I was inside the vehicle. Just, I'm not giving, telling you to do it to everybody. Be careful. I saw an elderly woman preaching inside the vehicle. Look at the woman. I knew she was clean. I paid for her transport. And I gave her money. said, Mama, please use this one and drink coke. And she stood at the bus stop. I said, in your generation, you will never know what is lack. Atikotu. You give. Sometimes you don't know what, what, what giving can do for you. Now, what is the next channel? Number two. What is the next channel? Holy Spirit, I beg you, please help me. What is the next channel that God uses to bless people? Number two is concept. Concept. Bracket. Strategy. Strategy. You can't be wealthy until you have strategy. God has to give you strategy for wealth. God has to give you strategy to be wealthy. There are many who don't have strategy. Deuteronomy 29 verse 29. Deuteronomy 29 verse number 29. There are many who don't have strategy for wealth. Anytime you don't, you need money. Ask God what is the strategy. The secret things belongs unto God. What is the strategy? And what is the key? What is the secret to strategy? Study. Observation. Study. Observation. You study books. You study things of what you do. You observe. There are many of us, we don't learn from anybody. It is in somebody's greatness you become great. You need to study. So somebody is ahead of you. There is someone doing business around you. Have you observed that person? Have you studied the person? Have you known what is the secret? Have you known what it is in studying people? God gives you your own strategy. There are many things we are running in this church. It didn't just come by help from alone. It came by studying my spiritual father, Dr. Pastor Paul Adventure. Watch him, see him. Study him, idea came. Study him, strategy came. When you know how to study people, not envy people, you will get strategy. Yes. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? people know how they have been blessed everybody does not go to native doctor to be blessed there are people who are genuinely blessed right strategy sir. number two number three what is the channel god uses to bless people number three god gives them success in all they do god makes all you do to succeed no matter how little it is that is where a pure water person start building a house. And people are wondering, is this woman not selling pure water? How come she's building a house? When God makes all you do succeed, riches will come. Yes. The problem with many of us is not that. Stretch your hands towards me. From today, whatever you do with your hands shall prosper. I declare whatever you do with your hands shall prosper. Somebody say, I have seen. Say it again. How can you be busy and still be poor? How can you be going out?
out every morning and yet you are broke, God needs to bless what you do. Because what you do is a channel to your wealth. Joshua chapter 1 verse 18 says that. Now, how do God bless the work of your hands? By being diligent. By being diligent. By being diligent. That's 18. By being diligent. God bless the work of your hands by being diligent. Those who are not hard working can never see hard work. God doesn't bless lazy people. He may not use your business to make you wealthy, but he wants to see your passion, your diligence in what to do. He can open other streams of income. Yes. yes. When you are a person who goes to market anytime you like, because you are your dad. You don't have account, you don't have anything. Everything is zigzag. Anything you just say, you just chop. According to as you said, you work. You don't have diligence, you don't have order. You don't have, you don't have, you are not accountable, you don't have savings, you don't have anything. You are just, anyhow I sell, I eat. Anyhow I sell, no. God doesn't bless such kind of, He bless organized people. Very organized. People who give account of their business, they know their profit. There are some of you, you don't know the loss, you don't know anything, you just, whatever comes to your hand, you sell, you make. That's not how they run it. You don't run life like that. God does not bless a zigzag person. He bless an orderly person. Orderliness is the key that attracts blessing. Say amen. In your house, you don't have orderliness. You don't have orderliness on hand. You run things in your house. Everything just happens. Anyhow, you people don't have order. You don't know your expenses. You don't know your income. You don't know things. It's just sometimes we put God under pressure when God needs us to plan. Did you hear me? We put God under pressure. When God wants you to plan, your income is 200,000 naira. Why are you putting God under pressure for 500,000 naira things? Plan it. The way you are quiet, I don't like it. Number, number four. Well, how do God make people rich? By giving them connection. Somebody say connection. connection. Somebody say connection. connection. Business connection. Job connection, career connection, international connection. There is a connection God gives you, you become wealthy. There are one of you here, you are one way to your wealth by one man. And today, I prophesy, you will meet that person. That person you need to meet, that has a link to your wealth. I prophesy, you will meet that person. is a channel of riches. God can bless your labor. God can bless your labor. God can give you what you want through your labor. God can give you this. But one major way to contact. God can give you one man who can tell you, please, I want to import goods. What 200 million? And your profit is 20 million. Contact. God can make you miss somebody online that the person is looking for a faithful person like you to hand over his estate. If you stand up to say amen, may you have connection. May you have connection. Shall the land is Take your seat. Number five is called miracle money. God can give you connection. God can bless the work of your hand. But there's what we call miracle. Miracle money. That means you jam opportunity where you make you jam money. You didn't work for it. You didn't plan for it. You were not thinking you'll be wealthy in one month. You don't have any mind. All of a sudden, after the service on Tuesday, you just hit a money. Well, I'm talking to people, maybe my officers I'm talking to. Uh, that is a miracle. That is, you have, you have in one day a money you should have in 20 years. Okay, tell me, 
Where the people you are interested? Are you interested in the miracle money? You have in one day what you should get in 10 years. If you stretch your hands to say amen, I prophesy miracle money will come for you. Jesus. 